so um, just to go over the agenda, those were my opening remarks. I'll go over our plus one budget for the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager. Uh, Chairwoman Melissa Migliaccio will go over the plus one budget for the Board of Education. Chairman Mike Gorko will have some Board of Finance comments. We will have discussion and items of interest concerning the budget and consideration of public comment. And uh, then we will adjourn. Sound good? Everybody happy with that? All right. So moving on to my remarks regarding the plus one budget for the town manager and Board of Selectmen. As most folks know, many years ago, Board of Selectmen, Board of Education, Board of Finance adopted this guideline uh, budget process that includes this call for a plus one budget. Uh, what we look for is the Selectmen and the Board of Education uh, meet with the Board of Finance to review our expenditure needs and fund balance expectations. The process typically takes place in December, January. Once uh, that ongoing needs are reviewed, a preliminary guideline is given to the boards uh, by the Board of Finance. A finalized guideline is then adopted in typically February when more detailed revenue and expenditure information is available, especially from the state of Connecticut. Um, and this being the first year of a new governor, uh, there may be some delays, but hopefully not. Uh, following past suggestions from the Board of Selectmen, uh, this budget was developed to sustain town operations. The town manager developed this budget that shows requirements that will do just that and maintain uh, town operations. The expenditures for salary and wages for employees, including step increases, preliminary cost estimates for employee benefits, and items of contractual nature were deemed important to adequately maintain those operations. Um, we've also, the town manager has added at the end of the report that's included here, some add back items, and those are items and items of concern. These items reflect identified town service needs on a single or multi-layer basis. Um, it is recommended that at least a fair portion of these items be endorsed and referred to the Board of Finance for inclusion in our budget. As you can see by the three-page document, there's uh, many different changes. I'm not going to go through each one of them as that information is available on our website as well as uh, at the back of the room this evening. Some things to highlight include existing wages uh, for a change of $192,000. We uh, do have three contracts that are currently being uh, negotiated, so to put a placement there, uh, we're looking possibly up to 3.5% increase in both full-time, part-time, and required steps. Uh, as well as existing fringe benefits. Um, there are changes that we were notified today in our health benefit premiums. Um, so those uh, will possibly increase or will increase uh, pension, FICA, Medicare, life insurance, and disability as well. Moving on to the next page, our contingent, contingency and reserve and miscellaneous expenses. Uh, those are uh, due to deductible for underground storage tanks. That's an increase of $110,000. Um, our insurance for both business package insurance, which is property and liability, as well as our workers' comp. We see a 5% increase in our workers' comp insurance and also a premium increase that uh, we're trying to work on right now with our insurance business package. Uh, other items to highlight are health services for Farman and Valley Health District. That looks like an increase at this point of uh, $7,000. That's uh, to meet their statutory mission. And a final amount at this point is unknown. They're still trying to estimate that. Moving on to diesel fuel, a $5,000 increase, and that's due to price and review of the usage. Equipment parts increase due to demand and price increases of parts as well. Let's see, tree work increased due to uh, aging and dead trees in the town right away. 
that's an increase of estimated to be about nineteen thousand um, dollars solid waste and recycling collection uh, this is an increase due to a contractual obligation uh, as well as uh, <coughs> obligate and the new homes so that's an increase of uh, thirteen point four uh, thousand dollars um, and property demolition I forgot that one that's an increase of about forty thousand dollars there are some blight enforcement issues uh, there is some uh, seeking court approval to uh, demolish uh, several buildings um, and again that's in, in the courts right now uh, and that's an increase of forty thousand uh, dollars let's see the Suggested add backs. We are looking for um, IT operations. Uh, one thing our IVAC committee had uh, fought for was a uh, combination of IT services for both the Board of Education as well as the town. Uh, cyber risk unfortunately becomes a uh, daily occurrence, not here, but throughout the country. So we're trying to uh, be proactive and get ahead of the game. Looking at general and equipment maintenance for a maintainer two, uh, that's $25,000 for an additional employee halfway through the year and $10,000 for half year of benefits. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, our library services of $7,000 uh, to restore the cutbacks that were uh, done several years ago. Um, so the above chart really reflects approximately seven hundred and thirty two thousand dollars eight hundred or six point eight percent as minimal requirements for existing town operational needs in fiscal year 2019-20 may again be possible to hold close to that amount without service reductions should also be kept in mind that department budgets have not yet been completely developed we will be holding a new format this year with the department heads will be meeting at uh, each one of the Board of Selectmen budget <coughs> meetings to present their budget. So all that information is available and out in the open and we encourage everybody to come to that as well. And this amount identified in the plus one budget is 7.4% uh, uh, including the three bags, uh, add back items if you include that amounting to just under $800,000 above the present operating budget. Some open items of concern that were identified by the town manager include finance staffing, overworked department due to state mandates, rules, <coughs> regulations, and volume. Uh, human resource services, loss of human resource full-time person. Our police department, additional officers needed for proper staffing levels. Uh, staffing for all departments uh, need to plan for future needs in general, trying to be proactive. Also, current school uh, need to monitor for future use. Uh, as folks know, there is a proposal currently be, being worked on. And then IT need to review estimated costs of developing an IT department for ongoing and future needs. So at this point, I will... Um, ask the town manager if he has anything to add before I ask uh, the Board of Selectmen to add anything. No, you covered it very well. <laughs> there you go. Uh, any members of the Board of Selectmen have anything to add? At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Chairwoman uh, Melissa Migliaccio for her presentation. Thank you, Scott. Welcome, everyone. Good to see everyone. Um, I'll point your attention to this, we will call it a beige, um, that Alan and his administration have prepared as a highlight of our plus one budget. Um, right to the nitty gritty, 4.83% proposed increase for this year's budget versus fiscal year 19 budget. Um, with that is a standing still number, 2.47%, um, what I call a do nothing number um, if we were to keep everything as is with no no additions. Uh, we are recognizing uh, a third of a point of retiree savings, as we all know, when people retire, uh, we either replace them with um, newer folks who tend to make less money or we do not replace them based on operational needs. 
zero percent is reflected in enrollment, and I'll discuss enrollment a bit later. Um, but we are on target with our declining enrollment projections, um, and we are full in each of our classes. Um, we have three fourths of a point in addition for special education, just shy of one percent in new programming. Uh, 0.58, 0.58 uh, quality and, di and diversity move over into the operating budget, which has been one of our goals, and the all other line items come in at uh, four tenths of one percent. We're seeing increased revenue um, between education cost sharing and excess costs for special education. We're seeing an increase in $700,000 in revenue from the state versus fiscal year 19. And I say that with the caveat that um, we haven't seen the governor's budget yet. As Scott noted, that should come out in mid to late February. Personnel of note. We have um, special ed. We have an increase in um, 8.2 full-time employees. Um, we have 0.2, which is, I hate to split up a person, but we have a 0.2 speech and language pathologist to service our students. Um, an extra special education resource teacher, and seven teaching assistants at the elementary level, um, the primary at, and elementary level, um, which goes up to the fifth grade. We have um, an increase in the following 3.6 full-time regular education. Uh, we have a strings program that we currently, um, we're excited about adding. We have adding Chinese, Mandarin, which is currently offered, uh, we push it down into the sixth grade. We are offering next year um, in the seventh grade, so that's point two of a Chinese teacher. Uh, a need at the elementary level for the addition of a point two Spanish teacher. There is currently no math interventionist at the Wells Road School, so there is an increase of 1.0 math interventionist at that school. And then 1.0 teaching assistant, which is actually, I believe, 2.5s to cover recesses and lunches and, and things of that nature. Uh, we have a recurring budgetary need that was reflected but not funded in last year's budget for a full-time maintenance worker. Special education, I noted above, we are going to recognize increased revenue. Um, and we have decreases um, related to out-of-district tuition and transportation. Um, from fiscal year 19, and then you have a 0.76 increase for new staff and out of district expenses. As you all know, special education is a big part of our budget, and we are mandated to provide services, which we often have no control financially over, and we do want to service all of our students. Small cap, this should be no stranger to anyone. Uh, replacement of one bus with one used bus and purchase of one lift for our maintenance department. Um, as you all know, we are very um, fiscally conservative. We own our buses, we do not lease them, and we have taken good care of them. So um, down to fixtures, furniture, and equipment. You can find a detail in our budget proposal, which lays out every single proposed expense um, on page seven. Um, that totals about just shy of $108,000 maintenance and technology expenses, um, also detailed on page seven. Um, one of our big expenses was removing a $20,000, a 20,000 gallon underground storage tank, um, end of life at the high school, and replacing the hot water heater burners at the high school. Those are the big ticket items. Um, and again, they're all detailed on page seven um, of, our, of our budget for fiscal year 20. Quality, quality and diversity. Um, as we continue to project out over the next five years, again, with the uncertainty of what the state will do, uh, the Quality and Diversity Fund has been taking hits um, for the past two years. Um, if we look at our spend out with our projected, it was projected to have a $5,000 balance in fiscal year 2024. One of our long-term goals has been our kindergarten teachers, um, which we added full day kindergarten, I wanna say five years ago, maybe longer, um, have always been in our quality and diversity budget. That is an operating expense, and as part of our goals, we are moving two teachers, um, that's a good start, from the Q&D budget into the operating budget. Other items um, from quality and diversity. Magnet school tuition, we currently pay when our students from Granby choose to attend magnet schools. I am pleased to report that um, as an overall trend in education, we're finding that more of our students prefer to stay at Granby Memorial High School. Farm to school program, uh, that I believe is the 
GIFSUB. GIFSUB, is that uh, part of a grant um, growing together? And I believe that's partially funded by Gifts of Love. I'd also um, <coughs> like to mention Gordy was instrumental in getting an EPAC grant, I believe, the environmental grant, so thanks to you. Um, our robotics team, our award-winning robotics team, our wonderful drama programs, our Generations Mentoring Program, one-to-one -one support for our um, technology, musical instruments, uh, we also received a generous grant from the GEF for musical instruments, and a late bus, which has been something that parents have been asking for, uh, and this year was its first uh, excursion, uh, and we continue to monitor that, but it is in our budget. Club stipends, the Bridges program for the middle school and the high school, which is an equity program, uh, that continues to be projected out of quality and diversity. So with that said, I will take a breath and talk about our funded. I'm not gonna go through all of these, um, but we have an EASC accreditation going on at the high school. Uh, we have um, our priorities, our class sizes, making sure those are on target. Equity, the Q&D budget, as I just went through. Special education, already discussed. Exciting, we, have, uh, we were one of 100 school districts nationwide and of only two in Connecticut that were selected for a pre-AP course program uh, run by the College Board. So that is a pilot program uh, in English, Algebra One, and Visual Arts. A new AP course, Capstone Research. We've got strings coming into the uh, elementary school, grade three. And again, I talked about um, pushing down Mandarin Chinese into grade seven. Uh, we continue to look at athletics and extracurricular activities. We have pay to play currently, um, and a lot of the clubs require a stipend. Uh, there's consideration of a new substitute teacher service and also our nursing contract I know you mentioned Farmington Valley we also use Farmington Valley Health Services unfunded um, these are priorities that did not make it into the budget this year uh, projected enrollment uh, we're on target uh, for and but our rate of decline if you play it out I want to say over 10 years is that accurate yeah, yeah, if you yeah. play out over 10 years we're still declining but not quite at the rate that uh, we predicted, but that is, uh, that's our best projection, and I know Alan works with the census folks. Staffing, um, so we are looking at um, overall increase in staffing, but as I explained, some of that is due to extra teaching assistance at the elementary level, also uh, transitioning our kindergarten teachers out of Q&D into the operating budget. Large capital, um, high school facility upgrade. I know this was all discussed at the CPAC meeting um, last Thursday night. Uh, solar voltaic system and emergency generators. Uh, just by way of clarification, the emergency generators at the middle school are done. These are not those massive generators that would provide um, emergency shelter for townspeople. These are smaller propane generators that would be located at Kelly and Wells. And with that said, I will ask my Board of Education members if they have anything to add. Comments? Um, I would ask uh, Board of, I would turn it back to Scott and see if we have any questions on your end. Any questions from Board of Selectmen? No, nope. seeing none, I will uh, move to Chairman Mike Orko for Board of Finance comments. Thank you, Scott. Tonight is one part of a process where we look to balance the needs and wants of the town government with what the taxpayers want to see done and what they're willing to pay. The increases we talked about tonight are uh, 2.1 million offset by the revenue side, the what we think would be the increase in from budget to button, local budget to what's at the moment we think the number from the state for fiscal 20 for ECS and for the excess cost being pretty close to 700,000. We're still waiting for some important pieces in this growth was talked about it the CPAC meeting back in, I think, December, that those two new projects are worth roughly 5% in the grand list, and 
new taxes once they're complete, and then the question becomes, what's the timeline? And we'll look not only to find out by January 31st what the increase in the grand list was as of October 1st of, of 18, but look to get a sense for what those increases may be. What the what seems to be the schedule for completion of the, the housing development right down the street here, Upper Brook, and then across from Floydville. The two phases there, the apartments, and after that, the housing. Um, those things increases in the list will all help the picture. The other major piece of information comes when the government presents his budget. And what level of credibility is he placed on those numbers? Typically, we take the numbers presented by the, the governor as the numbers that we use as the base for state, state money for next year for the town, yet on occasion we've chosen to not necessarily accept them at face value, instead to take different numbers because we don't think they'll be as good as or usually as bad as proposed by the governor, particularly when they come forward irrespective of party with uh, significant decreases proposed because the legislature does not like to take the money away from constituent tenants since they like to get re-elected the next time around. So through the next month we'll take all these pieces of information into consideration. A week from last from last night we'll set formulate the uh, take a first shot at the spending operating budget guidelines for the year. And in February, after the governor's budget comes out on the 20th, within a few days, for the financial meet, and we'll set the final targets that we're looking to have those numbers come in at. In the meantime, the administrations are working on they're spending proposals and finalizing numbers, adding a little here as things change and reducing in other places as better information becomes available. Um, and part of the message from the Board of Finance is simply, if we look at where we've been in recent years, um, that gives us some <coughs> to go and how we look to get there and at what level we look to get there. But the other thing that uh, is going to impact the next couple of years budget, most likely even fiscal 20, is how we handle capital. We have a couple bridges that are closed that need to be dealt with sooner rather than later. But in pursuing the uh, grant money from the state and federal programs, it, uh, it takes, it'll, it'll take time to see those projects completed. The, the financial impact may begin hitting this budget. It will certainly show up for the second year of fiscal 21. Other projects being talked about, the Melissa, you mentioned uh, the high school, the, the solar, all that discussion will take place in the next couple of months so that decisions are made, what comes forward when, and what the impact will be. And this information sessions will be held similar as they have been in the past by the capital planning group, CPAC, for the public so that they can see what's being recommended, when it's being recommended, and how it's going to impact 
their their tax bill going forward. I don't think I've I've missed anything from our side. <coughs> Just uh, we need the info as it becomes available. We're continuing to work with both boards to get get the numbers to where we hope end up with a product we can take forward and get approval at uh, that machine vote the fourth Monday of April. Any comments from my board? Question of the BOG. I think Gordy's trying to invite me in to say something. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think, it, now that I have the floor, I will say a few things. Number one, I think we have some outstanding issues in terms of the taxpayer and voter of Granby. And we saw a significant change in terms of the tax structure that all of us are facing in terms of this year going to next year. And a lot of us have no idea how that's going to impact us. But we do know that the maximum deductible, if you will, for taxes, state, property and everything is $10,000. Many, many, many of our citizens are significantly beyond that. So that impacts them in terms of how they see the tax rate. Yes, there's some changes in terms of the percentage of tax and so forth. And unless you have a very, very active uh, uh, financial accountant, it's probably pretty difficult to spell out exactly what that means. Against that kind of a backdrop, we're looking at some significant increases from what I can see. And even though we have a significant reduction in uh, what I would consider the, uh, the debt service, which will help us tremendously, I think, in next year's budget, this far exceeds anything that that reduction will, uh, will provide. So um, I think this is the first shot out of the, out of the bag, so to speak. Um, I think we need some very, very sharp pencils that I know we can provide and prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. A lot of things need to be done, and I feel very, very good about the identification of the expenditures. On the other hand, when you look at it on a macro basis, I don't know that that's saleable when inflation for the taxpayer is 2%. So this far exceeds that. Enough said. One question for the DOE, I just want to reconcile. <coughs> On page two of the daily turnout, the staffing census reduction zero SDGs in <coughs> fiscal 20, yeah, it's a net add of 11. So what's, get me from one place to the other. Yeah. <coughs> sure. Or is this the new map that works? Or no. So uh, we have 44 students, uh, a decline in 44 students uh, next, next year, which are primarily at the intermediate school and high school. The high school makes it a wee bit more problematic, actually. Uh, over the years, I think we've been fairly aggressive, in fact, very aggressive about class size um, in, uh, in our projection for the, for the five years out. Um, we've, we've, we've tried to analyze those uh, the whole way along. That's why we actually dis display them every, every, uh, every year over the five-year period. Just in this case, we say zero for a census for next year because of the disbursement of the kids uh, next year. It's just, if they're all in one class or two classes, then we can realize the same. In this case, just the disbursement of where they are and the tipping points for class sizes and stuff, unfortunately, just I'm not comfortable even making a reduction of one staff member in that case. Uh, for the actual personnel increases that you're talking about, um, this, is, this, this just goes to the continual uh, one of the characteristics and dynamics that we're facing, uh, the challenge about increasing special education needs. Uh, one of the things that you will find across any district in Connecticut at this point is the rise in issues of social and emotional learning and needs of children, um, and, the, and the rise and increase in needs of special education uh, students. So uh, these, are, these are legal requirements, um, uh, the, the responsibilities that uh, we have to stand up to. Uh, but you can see that you can see right away that eight over eight of these positions are special education that are really have little 
control over in many ways. Certainly, we, we, we review uh, the information and they'll make modifications where we where we can. Um, and then the, the three uh, regular education ones are simply uh, we committed to uh, through the Gr Granby Education Foundation. They give us like forty thousand dollars over two years. One of the things we're trying to do is really make, and we have done a, a great job through policymakers who have come before me, who are around this table, and, and others. Uh, to make this district very, very attractive to income and families, um, which is critical to the tax base too. Uh, so we continue to do that. Uh, one of the things that we've done is the introduction of a strength program, which has been phenomenally well received uh, by parents. We're not going to start that in kindergarten and not then uh, take a break from it and then jump back in in middle school. So incrementally, and we've done this in a small way, it's not as if we're we're increasing the, the full middle school or one big leap uh, or, or making incremental changes, so you'll see the change there. We started Chinese in sixth grade. Well, you can't start in sixth grade and not continue in seventh and jump back into it in eighth and as we continue to uh, build the program there. Uh, again, we have languages uh, K through 12. It's another very attractive thing to uh, parents that come into the district. The Spanish is just one section because we have a Spanish teacher who travels all over from like, three different schools. Uh, teaches everything from kindergarten Spanish to AP Spanish, and uh, the logistics of it are just very, very difficult at the moment. So that's a, that's a part time position for that. Math interventionist is, um, in terms of equity, uh, improvement in math performance uh, at the intermediate school, it's the only school that doesn't have a math interventionist currently at the moment. One teaching assistant at the uh, intermediate school is Simply Safety. We have a number of teaching assistants. Believe it or not, run through, run and cover several classrooms at lunch and recess. And, uh, that, that we need to rectify that a little bit, um, come to terms with that, and that, that's really all that is. And the maintenance worker has been an ongoing issue. Um, we were very aggressive in reducing staff when we uh, closed uh, the current school. Um, subsequently, I mean, yeah, checks and balances along the way. Uh, our capital needs are significant. Uh, many of them aren't getting met. Um, uh, this is one of our high priorities, actually, in this main position. So, uh, that's the breakdown of the actual 11 net positions. Um, so, the simple answer to the census reduction is simply based on school enrollment, these are the reductions. Yes. That's it. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. So, well, this is How do you want to know that? that? <laughs> I just like him. Thank you. 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 Thank than aside from the overall number in two areas. One has been anticipating and responding to the decreased enrollment and I'm, I'm very pleased to see what what we've done in that area and uh, I think Granby got ahead of the curve on, on that and I read stories about other school districts where they're having they're struggling with being able to to respond in that so I feel very good about that the other area that I've felt that there's been uh, opportunities for us that have been missed, have been in uh, sharing of services between the town and the school. And I was surprised to see a desired budget item in the, in the Board of Selectmen for $25,000 for an IT, for IT services or, or resources. I guess I would have thought, I thought the direction where IBAC was headed on that I'll just say what I think, and then you can, whoever can straighten me out, was that central office would, would take the lead on IT services, and they were going to provide IT services for both the school and the town. So I guess I would have, I would have thought that if there was going to be $25,000 for additional resources, it would have been the Board of Ed budget, unless it's going to get transferred over or something to the, to the central office. But it doesn't have the feel to me that we're uh, sharing services like had been advertised and is desired I think by by everybody here. So even if I'm sorry. Okay, that's it. So even if it is uh, shared services, which is what we're working for, the town has to pay for those services. So I'll let the town manager address your question directly, <coughs> perhaps superintendent at least. So on page, on page five of uh, 2021, you'll see I've got the, 
uh, $152,000 uh, tentatively scheduled because uh, John and I have been working on a plan and we relatively have it in a good place uh, to present uh, and back to IBAC. So we have that actually built in here. Um, so there is a there is a, a, a draft of uh, the actual plan. Um, so is it something for the future? Yes. Uh, sort of, I, you're I, working on a plan, but... Uh, and it's actually penciled in for t uh, 21. For the implementation yes. of it? Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. So they are working on that to move it. I think uh, Mr. Kennedy had his... I'll need, there's, uh, there's Mike alluded to 11 full-time equivalents yeah. up in personnel. Down in quality of diversity, there's two kindergarten teachers being transferred yes. Yes. To, the pay, to the actual payroll. Yes. Does the money go with that? Does that mean there's 13 added to the payroll, or is it not? So so, so net is a net zero, right? We take it out of the net people. We take it out of the quality diversity, and we put it into uh, the operating budget. And that's, so that's essentially, as Melissa said, to manage the quality university. It's a net zero FTD, but yes, the actual salaries are transferred from quality university and now become the general fund of the operating budget, yes. So it, it, it in no way reflects the, the 11 additional personnel? No, because it's just a net zero. The bodies are already there, it's just a question of who's paying for them. Essentially, it's the shifting from when they went to the full day kindergarten and we're gonna fund it with the extra money from the state, but now, it's the camel's nose under the tent getting into the budget. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Jenny, you have a question? Right, just um, two, uh, two comments on things that have been raised on the, on the technology. As I recall, what we learned during the IVAC discussions and, the, um, and our interest in uh, directing the town manager and the superintendent to work together on integrated services, um, was as much about um, addressing additional needs uh, that were clearly emerging that weren't fully being met across the town as a whole. Um, it was about that more than saving money. There was, it means that addressing those needs, ideally if we do it right on an integrated basis, will cost us less than if we did it on our own. But something needed to be done. Um, more needed to be invested there than we were, inve we were under investing. So it wasn't a cost savings thing to integrate, it was a smart way to move forward. Um, and the other point I wanted to make was, um, just because the, the number jumps out, the, uh, with the seven teaching assistants uh, for, for special ed, um, it's actually a zero increase next year because we've already had to add them this year. That's why that line in the budget looks the way it does. Um, so we're, you know we're, we're, we'll be playing we're playing catch up already this year and and, it, and that's just a reality of the nature of the population that comes and goes and, and it's a perfect example of of the problems with with meeting some of those needs. So I just wanted to clarify those things. Thank you for your clarification. Kelly? Yeah, two questions on the the town side. Um, one is what was driving the large increase in pensions. You want to ask them both or will answer us? Yeah, and, and the second question I had is the demolition of the condemned properties, are they town properties or are they private? And if they're private, why does the town pay for it? Yes, um, I'll take that in reverse order. The uh, proposed $40,000 for demolition to one property in particular and the rest would be uh, more for down the road, but there is one private property that through safety and blight concerns has been subject to town enforcement. Um, and it's more probable than not that we'll receive approval to move ahead on the safety concerns, which means demolishing the property. In order to recoup the investments, we would put a lien on the property with the expectation that when the property is sold, the lien would be paid back. It's not a guarantee, but I don't think it's that fraught with risk. Um, and the thought being, from time to time, we may need to demolish other properties. Uh, the 40000 is not an exact figure. It would vary depending on the environmental condition of the property, but it's a good faith ballpark. In regards to the increase in pensions, uh, the pension are driven by actuarial concerns. 
we do have an outside vendor assess the health of the pensions and they would in turn tell us what the annual required contribution is. Uh, we have been lowering the investment assumption. Uh, I believe currently it's at 7.125%. Um, for example, the state is still at 8%, while 2017 is a good return on the market. It's still considered uh, we should be lowering it. The other factor that's driving the increase in pension costs is mortality rates. People are living longer. Uh, but the only department that still has pensions for new employees is the police department. Um, the rest for new employees, they're on a DC plan or a direct contribution, not a direct, not a DB plan. Is that a Uh, can I say one other thing? Um, something that sort of came up in our CPAC that uh, um, kind of amplifies what uh, Bo Val and, and Mike were pointing out. Mike talked about our challenge, the obvious challenge of balancing our needs and our wants with what our taxpayers can afford and are willing to support. But it's actually a little bit broader than that. It's a little more complicated than that because one of the other things we're trying to balance is the investments we need to make in the town to continue to make it attractive for new growth. Like, we saw in the last couple of years. It's just me speaking, but it's one of the things that kind of helps me uh, put the whole package together is that that growth is important to us. If good, sensible, smart growth is important to us because it helps us diversify the tax base and in, in the long run helps smooth this out for the taxpayers. So we, it's, it, and it impacts both the decisions that we make in our presentations in the operating budgets and in the capital projects, right? People aren't going to move to the town if um, they don't have great schools, and they're not going to move to the town if they can't cross the bridges and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a, the challenge is a little bit broader and a little bit longer term than just year in and year out. Thank you for your comments. Um, any other members of any board have any further comments? Town treasurer. At this point, uh, seeing none, um, I would like to open it up to public comment. If you could keep your comments to the budget, we did have a Board of Selectmen meeting prior to this where you can talk about anything, but we would like to have folks address any items uh, regarding the budget, uh, proposed budget from any board. Uh, granted, this is the plus one budget. It's kind of a you know, plan and action or whatever that's called. Um, so it's very preliminary. Um, but if you have comments or questions, if you could please come up to the podium, uh, state your name and address, uh, for the record. Point any members of the public wish to address. Sir, you could come up to the podium. Would you mind if I speak from here so that everybody can see me? Because well, we'd like to get you on camera. No, <laughs> okay. Sorry, for those of you who are facing backward, you can uh, turn around. I figure if we have to be on camera, you have to be on Okay, uh, my name is uh, Nelson Toussaint. I live at uh, 279 Granville Road. And uh, first of all, I treat this as a high-level discussion so that we're all trying to figure out where can we go, not all the bits and details that all these good people are going to work out later on. So I wanted to read you something that uh, I thought was particularly valuable. It addressed the state of Connecticut, but it was in the Granby Drummer two months ago. And I'll read a couple of ex excerpts because I think uh, they express you know, my position anyway. <coughs> uh, the recent Blue Ribbon Commission on Economic Stability call for the state to get a grip on its spending. It urged the legislation to stop raising tax rates year after year as that becomes counterproductive to revenue source. Increases have driven business and people to vote with their feet. And I don't believe that's anything new to anyone. Okay? Um, as former Prime Minister of Great Britain, Margaret Thatcher said, in the 80s, socialism is great until you run out of other people's money. Okay, so I'm particularly talking to 
my money and other people's money here because it's our ability to pay. Um, if I can go on with that for just a little bit, it won't be long. But as one often finds in government, without exercising fiscal restraint, more money just fuels the fire and more spending for the wishlist of those in government and others and the special interests that help get them into office. Okay, that uh, we can skip. In the end, with a myriad of perceived needs, some that are real and others that are just on the wish list, there is only so much money to go around. Now, I know everybody has sort of talked in the long range about building Granby and building Granby and making it attractive, etc. And one of the things that is detracting from people wanting to come here is our tax rate. You know, you, I hear it every day, and I'm sure you do as well. We have spent sort of beyond our means. So it's time, I think, to look at everything we do and tear out those things that we need to do from those things that we want to do and manage that budget a lot more aggressively than we have in the past. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public wish to address uh, all three boards at this point? Okay. Seeing none, I will close public comment. Oh, yes. Sorry. Just my moment there. You snooze, you lose. Uh, Susan Patricelli, reading 62 Hungary Road, Greater Connecticut. Um, I'd like to pay a compliment to the Education Department, who I have always admired, especially under Alan Adler's direction. Melissa's uh, as uh, chairman of the Education Committee, I think they do a phenomenal job. And I think that if we were to use them as a template for how to run our town, we'd be in good shape. <coughs> All right. Thank you for that, I guess. Right. Uh, at this point, I do want to end the meeting with a positive note. Um, Sunday, I did receive a call from Governor Lamont to my home phone, and uh, when it rang, it said, Edward Lamont, you know, we don't answer our home phone much. We never use it. We always use our cell phone. And I was like, Edward Lamont, gosh, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> and we let it go to voicemail. And of course, I get a thing from Cox on my phone, and I listen to it, and it's the governor of Connecticut calling me. And my kids are like, oh, Dad, that's not true. So I go in my office, and I call him back, and he called to tell me, A, he wanted to introduce himself to me. So that was positive. I never had that happen. I don't think John's had that happen. Um, that's a great first step. I'm, I'm encouraged by that, and I was happy. Um, so I was talking to him. We were talking about Patriots and the game that was about to come on. And one of the other reasons he called me was to tell me that Connecticut or Granby had the highest snow totals in the entire state of, <laughs> of Connecticut. And I said, "Wow, that's great." <laughs> you know, and uh, I just thought it. You know, I want to end on a positive note that what a great first step. He, he was in the, he told me he was in the emergency center because they were starting to lose power. Uh, and he took the time out to call the town of Grand. Um, I took that, I was pretty psyched. And, you know, I came out of my office, I was telling people this morning, I came out of had coffee with Cunley, I said, uh, you know, I came out of my office and my kids are like, Dad, who are you talking to? And I'm like, yeah, I was talking with Governor of Connecticut, and uh, so it was kind of, it was pretty neat. So um, that being said, hopefully that's a, a good omen for things to come and that uh, Granby will be assisted uh, by the governor and the state legislature. Um, so that's hopefully a positive note. Let's hope that works. Um, at this point, I will ask the Board of Selectmen for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion a second for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention motion carries. Thank you and good night. Thank you, everyone, for coming.